Which we don't seem to be able to go to. There's a guard in the way. The Tower of Ishal is off limits. The men stationed inside are securing it now. What is the Tower of Ishal? I think they used it once to watch for wilders coming out of the forest. Why is the tower off limits exactly? By orders of Tern Loghain. The tower is being secured by his men to be used during battle. I'm told they discovered some lower chambers, and they don't know how far down they go, so for now, everyone's to stay out. Lower chambers? I didn't see anything like that when I was there, but who knows? This is a pretty large ruin. Goes back to the time of the Tevinter Imperium. Dwarven make. That's probably why it's still standing. I should go. Make a speed your steps. <laughs> yeah, Chaos Ringer. Wow, I wonder what the second dungeon will be. Uh, yeah, minor spoilers. We'll be in there. Um, before, before long. Um, and you also asked, does your clothing affect how people talk to you? Um, sort of. In the, uh, in the estate, in the noble's estate, where we were earlier, I believe if we had put on a different outfit so that our clothes weren't bloody, we could have bluffed our way past some of the guards. Um, uh, but because we were wearing the clothes that we had gotten into battle in, and they were bloodstained, we were caught out. Uh, so I believe that whether you are bloodstained or not can have- it's only a few instances, like it's not regular, but stuff like deception and bluffing, definitely what you're wearing counts. Uh, there's a, a stealth mission or two later in the game where that does definitely matter. So that's it for the eastern side. There's not really much. I mean, there's a few, like, plants I could go pick over there. Uh, but I'm not too worried about that. Then we have this enormous bridge across the ravine. It's got uh, sort of banners and statues on every post. It's the same motif of a woman with a hood and cloak holding a large shield in front of her. That's a lot of the statues we're seeing. There's also a single, very tall statue of a man in sort of almost Roman armor with a, a breastplate and skirt-like thing with um, big knee greaves holding a spear in his left hand in the center. Uh, there's a guard on patrol. It looks like the southern side of the bridge has been knocked out by time or by battle or something. There's a big gap here of just rough stone. I'll talk to this guard. Make her watch over you, my lady. I can't talk to this guard. Now here's another big chunk. This hole is like halfway into the bridge. Gotta run around that. Thankfully there is no um, fall damage. You literally cannot run off the side of areas. Like there's just an invisible wall. I can't, I can't fall off. Which is nice. And Hail, up. you must be the Grey Warden recruit that Duncan brought. And up to the west side, we have a guard greeting us here. This place hasn't seen such bustle in centuries, I'll wager. Need a hand getting anywhere? Oh, that would be nice. Let's see, tell me about Ostagar. Used to be a fortress long time ago, so I understand. Back in the days when the Wilders used to invade the lowlands. You were just on the eastern side of the ruin. The Tower of Ishal is there, but Tern Loghain's closed it off until the battle. This side is the King's Camp. We've got the Grey Wardens here, the Circle of Magi, the Chantry. You can't swing a dead cat without hitting somebody important. Well, don't swing dead cats. Let's see, I have various options here I can ask about things. Is there anywhere to get supplies? Quartermaster, he's just a bit to the northwest. Do I hear dogs barking? This is Ferelden, isn't it? The king has his kennels on the west side of camp. Stinks from all the hounds. These aren't cute puppies, though. Some of those dogs bite the darkspawn and get too much of that blood in them. It's like poison. Slow, painful death. Terrible. Where's the king? Probably in his tent. He and Tern Loghain are on the southwest side of the camp. The king likes to spend time with his soldiers, though. Sometimes even without his bodyguards, drives Tan Loghain wild, that does. And the Circle of Magi is here? A few mages, yes. 
They even brought those creepy quiet fellows, the Tranquil. Gives me the shivers when they talk, all cold and even. They're to the north of here, bunched up with a herd of Templars glaring at them. Can't miss it. I'll be on my way. Good luck to you then. So that's sort of our finding. Uh, Codex about Ostagar. Representing the furthest point of encroachment by the ancient Tevinter Imperium into the barbarian lands of the southeast, the fortress of Ostagar was once one of the most important defensive holdings south of the Waking Sea. It stood at the edge of the Korkari Wilds, watching for any signs of invasion by the barbarians, known today as the Chastened Wilders. Straddling a narrow pass in the hills, the fortress needed to be bypassed to reach the fertile lowlands to the north, and proved to be exceedingly difficult for the Wilders to attack because of its naturally defensible position. Like most Imperial holdings in the south, Ostagar was abandoned after Tevinter's collapse during the First Blight. It was successfully sacked by the Chasen Wilders, and then, as the Chasen threat dwindled following the creation of the modern Ferelden nation, it fell to ruin completely. It has remained unmanned for four centuries, though most of the walls still stand, as does the tall Tower of Ishal, named after the great Archon that ordered its construction. Ostagar remains a testament to the magical power of the Imperium that created it. From Ferelden Folklore and History by Sister Petrine, Chantry Scholar. Cool. Alright, so let me check the map here. So over here on the west side we have... We have X's marking different things. So we have King Kaelin's tent and Loghain's tent in the south. Duncan's Fire, um, sort of the south center. Dog Kennels to the west center. The Infirmary to the northwest. Quartermaster in the north. And then I see the quest marker for Alistair in the far north. So that means I'm going to start in the south. Because I'm never going to do the quest thing first. So here, here's the king's tent, which is very ornate. It's yellow silk, it looks like. Yellow and purple silk. Or at least something shiny. It has a wooden palisade around it. With one guard standing in front. Greetings. King Kaelin is not in his tent right now. Do you know where the king is? I believe he's with the Grey Wardens in camp, drinking. He holds them in high regard, you know, as his father did. Uh, I can try and pass a persuasion check to ask him to tell me about the king. Um, I'm gonna go for it. Tell me about the king. You must see him a lot. I suppose I do. Though he's spending most of his time with the Grey Wardens. He rides with them wherever they go, in fact. Terran Loghain sees the king whenever he can and argues with him over coming battles. But the king just waves him off. The king wants to end the blight with a single huge battle the bards will sing of for centuries. Do you think that's possible? This guard, although we can't see much of him. He has a... Uh, we can see that his face uh, is dark skin. He's wearing a helmet that sort of has wings coming off the sides, like where the ears would be. Very ornate. His armor is silver with some gold inlay, and he has a decorated chainmail sort of capelet over his shoulders as well. Um, the bards will sing up for centuries. Do you think that's possible? How should I know? I thought Grey Wardens knew all about the Darkspawn. The king thought it was funny that Tehan called him reckless, and they fought about the queen. The queen? She's the Tehan's daughter. He wasn't happy about something she did or the king did, I'm not sure. I probably shouldn't discuss it. I should go. As you wish. All right, so the king is married to the Tehan's daughter. Shouldn't be awkward at all. Here's Loghain's guard. You approach the tent of Terran Loghain. State your business. Uh, tell me about Terran Loghain. How can you not know of Loghain? He helped free Ferelden. He was the brains behind King Marek's armies and drove out those damned Orlesians. King Marek rewarded him by making him a Terran. Can you imagine? A commoner became a high nobleman just like that. Without Loghain, you can bet the king wouldn't be winning against these Darkspawn. Uh, this guard is not wearing a helmet. He's also dark-skinned with short curly hair. He has sort of green-tinted armor, uh, metal armor, and again with a chainmail capelet over his shoulders. Um, is the Terran inside? What is he doing? 
He's inside, but I don't think it's my place to discuss his activity. I have two different persuasion checks here. I can ask him to tell me about the Terran, or I can ask for an audience. Um, I don't feel like asking for, uh, for a nobleman to speak with me. So I'm gonna ask for some information. Surely you can tell me a little about him. I suppose, as long as we talk quietly. He and the King have been arguing for days. The Terran's known the King since he was swaddled, so they don't stand on ceremony. The Terran speaks his mind, and the King yells right back. Personally, I think the King should do what Terran Logang tells him. Without the Terran, we wouldn't be doing as well here as we are. I should go. Very well. Alright. So there's those. Um, is the whole game this dialogue and plot heavy? I like it. Yes! Uh, it is- <laughs> this is a very plot heavy game. Um, Although there is quite a bit of dungeon crawling that we will we will get to as we go further. Now I'm walking up a little embankment further to the south. This is where it overlooks the the rest of the valley a little bit. There's Look a bunch of man. This wretched thing is a dark soldiers sport. standing around. They're strong and cunning and smart, but don't listen to those old wives' tales. They can be killed. Stick them with your sword enough, and they go down. Their blood is black as sin and poisonous. Don't even touch it. You get tainted with that blood, and you may as well slit your throat. We've lost many dogs already. Had to muzzle them to keep them from biting. It's a long and painful way to die. There's about seven guards standing around here, all doing exactly the same idle animation, which is very funny. Uh, and a corpse of what must be a darkspawn on the ground. Um, I am not allowed to zoom in enough to really look at it, but it is shorter than a human. Maybe about the size of a, a dwarf, a skinny dwarf. Um, skin looks green. It's definitely got more teeth than a human would. Wearing some sort of makeshift armor. Uh, we'll see them up close later. There's also an unlockable chest just sitting out here in the open. What's in here? An iron dagger. My inventory's full. That's all right. It's only there are lots one. of spawn, Different kinds. We're getting reports of things we've never even heard of. Our short friend here, for instance, is something called a genlog. They're pretty common in the Horde, but we've seen others much larger. We don't know where these new Darkspawn are coming from, or what they can do. All I can say is to use caution. They're on any we've seen that won't die once they bleed enough. I didn't know he had more dialogue. I had to come back for that. All right, running along this, this is supposed to be the battle that sends these darkspawn back underground. You believe that? I don't know what to believe. We've won every battle, but there's more of them each time. Makes you wonder if them Grey Wardens are right. I don't want to think about that. <sighs> Sounds like the perfect time to get drunk, if you ask me. There's two soldiers talking near the edge. Looking over here, uh, looks like a pretty nice-looking valley. Um... A pine forest, mostly. I see some water. Some some wetland. There's a cliff off in the distance. The last scouting party made it back last night. Barely. What do you mean? Only two of them made it. And one was minus a leg. Said they encountered some darkspawn that was ten feet tall, with horns as long as your arm. The injured one died last night. They said his blood was already turning black. Make us breath. Where are they all coming from? I was the same two people. I'm gonna run along the south here a little bit. Uh, I know from past experience that there's some stuff to loot over here in the southeast, far southeast. There's two sacks over here. One of which has a shield. Oh, my inventory's full. I need to trash some stuff. Let me trash some tier one stuff. Tier 1 crossbow, destroy that. Um, tier 1 short bow. Tier 1 shield. I gonna have a bunch of good shields. I don't need them. get rid of a couple of these 
resistance potions. I don't need those. I won't need those. Alright, now I have room for, to pick up one thing. Oh, is this not the place where the thing is? Blessed are the peacekeepers, the champions of the just. Ah, there's a priest here praying with two soldiers. There's a unique item in Ostagar somewhere. It might actually be back on the east side, not over here. There's something I need to make sure I get. There's a knight of high ever. Well met, my lady. Ten Loge may not think much of the Grey Wardens. But the king was wise to bring you here. And a high ever commander, both in very uh, heavy armor with great swords. All right, time to go back into the camp. I guess I should probably go find the quartermaster well, so I can sell some of my garbage. We stand here in this hour. Good folk of Ferelden, and we contemplate the death that may await. Death is no failure, my friends. Should it find you, you will not have failed your king. You will have served your maker. Die in this battle, and when you stand before the maker in the land beyond the Fade, he shall not find you wanting. Go not into death gladly, but with the knowledge that evil has been held at bay by your spilled blood. And if you go to stand beside the maker, go with our blessing, for you shall not be forgotten. My friends, let us bow our heads and remember those who have fallen and those who have yet to fall. That is a Chantry Priestess standing on a pretty tall wooden platform, preaching to a crowd of about eight guardsmen. Or soldiers, I guess they are here. Not guards. Um, the mages are over here. Some Templars in front I'm of there. I'm sorry, but the mages must not be interrupted. Oh? I can't go talk to him? I'm sorry, but the mages must not be interrupted. How about your your friend here? The mages must not be interrupted. Their spirits are in the Fade. The Fade? The Fade is the realm of dreams and the land of the dead. Or so the mages tell us. Regardless, they are not to be disturbed. Not even by Grey Wardens. As you wish. Alright, so I can't mess with the Templars or the mages. There is one mage standing outside. Hear the prayers of your sons and daughters. Greetings, young lady. You are Duncan's newest recruit, are you not? He's not a man easily impressed. You should be proud. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Wynne, one of the mages summoned by the king. Wynne is an elderly white woman. Uh, she has um, pale white hair with a couple of strands in front, but the rest is pulled back into a bun. At the back of her head, she's wearing a blue padded robe um, with yellow shoulder pads and white fur on the uh, sleeve caps and the hem. Pleased to meet you. Well met, and good luck to you on the battlefield. To us all, in fact. King Kaelin thinks the battle will go well. The king must always seem confident. His behavior affects the troops' morale. He does seem to find his enthusiasm easily, though. Reminds me of a puppy. <laughs> and I say that with both respect and affection. He is a fine man. To defeat the Darkspawn, we have to work together. It's not an idea everyone seems able to grasp. Do you know much about Darkspawn? Some. Do you? Do you know about the connection between them and the Fade, for example? Isn't the Fade the land of the dead? Any time your spirit leaves your earthly body, whether it's to dream or to die, it passes into the realm we call the Fade. It's home to many spirits, some benevolent, others far less so. At the heart of the Fade lies the Black City. I've heard that. Didn't something bad happen there? Some say the Black City was once the seat of the Maker. But when the mages from the Deventer Imperium found a way into the city, it was tainted with their sin. That taint transformed those men, turning them into twisted reflections of their own hearts. And the Maker cast them back to the Earth, where they became the first Darkspawn. At least, that's what the Chant of Light says. And is that true? 
It may be allegory, meant to teach us that our own evil causes human suffering. Or it may be true. It is as good an explanation as any for now. At least it's something to ponder. Yes, occasionally it's wise to contemplate one's actions. <laughs> but I'm certain Duncan has more for you to do than talk to me. Okay. We who betrayed your prophet. Alright, codex us, entry on win. Codex entry on fade. Not abandon us in our darkened. Let's see, who is win? Quote, I will not lie motionless in a bed with coverlets up to my chin, waiting for death to claim me. Wynne's talent became apparent early on, particularly her skill at healing magic. She was well liked by all her mentors, and was recognized as an exceptionally gifted student. Even the Templars who watched her could not deny that she represented the best the Circle had to offer. She was an intelligent young woman who possessed a quiet confidence and maturity beyond her years. She spent many years mentoring apprentices within the Circle, and her peers thought so highly of her that she was asked to be First Enchanter Irving's successor, but she refused, saying that she had no desire to work in the upper echelons. When word reached the Tower of King, when word reached the tower of King Kaelin's call to arms, Wynne volunteered to go to Ostagar. Uh, and because <laughs> because she has a codex entry, it's pretty obvious that she will be relevant in the future. Alright, I see a, a side quest mark over here. There's a uh, kennel master. Mm, this isn't good. I hate to waste such a promising member of the breed. Are you the new warden? I could use some help. What's the problem? This is a Mabari. Smart breed and strong. His owner died in the last battle, and the poor hound swallowed Darkspawn mm. blood. I have medicine that might help, but I need him muzzled first. Kennel Master is a dark-skinned man, a uh, black man with long black hair, pulled back in two braids, and the rest hanging loose. Um, he has green-tinted leather armor with several belts across the front. Why do you think I could muzzle him? You're a Grey Warden, or soon will be. All Wardens are immune to the Darkspawn taint. The most you have to worry about is some tooth marks. Just how smart is this dog? Centuries ago, a mage bred them to be smart and understand what they're told. They can remember and carry out complex orders. Most valuable dogs in the world. Trouble is, they generally imprint to one master. Reimprinting them is very difficult, but without the medicine, re-imprinting won't be an issue. Will you help? I'll give it a shot. Go in the pen and let him smell you. We'll know right away if he'll respond. Let's hope this works. I'd really hate to have to put him down. The dog looks up at you respectfully, backing down from his aggressive stance. You can see intelligence in his eyes, as well as a great deal of pain. This animal is very ill. Oh, that's written out in the subtitles. Put the muzzle on the dog. I also have the option to kill the dog, which is extremely rude, or to just leave. The Mabari growls weakly, but does not challenge you. After you're done, he whimpers. Well done. Now I can treat the dog properly, poor fella. Come to think of it, are you heading into the wilds anytime soon? Um, I, the player, know that. I might be. Why? There's a particular herb I could use to improve the dog's chances. It's a flower that grows in the swamps here, if I remember. If you happen across it, I could use it. It's very distinctive, all white, with a blood-red center. Where in the wilds would I find this flower? It usually grows in dead wood that collects at the edge of ground pools. Should be plenty this time of year. Will the dog be all right without it? If he doesn't get it, chances are he'll need to be put down. I'll see if I can find one. Good. In the meantime, I'll begin treating our poor friend. All right, so we have our first side quest. Get a flower. Soldiers of Ferelden, my sisters and gentlefolk. So, any last wishes I can help fulfill before you head into battle? Life is fleeting, you know. That pretty face could be decorating some darkspawn spear this time tomorrow. 
Shall I take that quiet glare as a no? Ah, oh, well, too bad. That was a man named Davith talking to a woman labeled just generically heavy infantry. Let me talk to Davith. Well, you're not what I thought you'd be. Uh, and who are you? The name's Davith. <laughs> it's about bloody time you came along. I was beginning to think they cooked this ritual up just for our benefit. Oh, uh, this must be another Grey Warden recruit. Um, isn't that a little paranoid? <laughs> that depends on what kind of life you've led. Me, I'm perfectly willing to accept that this joining is some kind of punishment. I happened to be sneaking around camp last night, see, and I heard a couple of Grey Wardens talking. So, I listen in for a bit. I'm thinking they plan to send us into the wilds. The wilds? We're right on the northern edge of the Kakari wilds here, miles and miles of savage country. My home village isn't far, and I grew up on tales about the wilds. Even been in there a few times. <laughs> Scary place. Why are the wilds so frightening? Cannibals, beasts, witches, and now Darkspawn. What isn't to be scared of? It's all too secretive for me. Makes my nose twitch. I guess we'll have to wait and see. <laughs> like we have a choice. I realize I haven't described him yet. Davith is a tan-skinned man with short dark hair. He's wearing a padded shirt with a uh, tan canvas vest over it. Uh, several straps around the front and the belt. He's got two weapons at his hip. I can't tell it's a sword and a dagger or two daggers. Um, like we have a choice. They're forcing you to be here. I've got nowhere else to go after what Duncan saved me from. Anyway, I expect it's time to get back to Duncan. That's where I'll be if you need me for anything. Alright, so we found a fellow recruit. Um, he was right next to the quartermaster. Uh, the quartermaster is standing next to an unlockable chest. With a grey iron dagger in it. Tier 2. Alright, I'll take your dagger, and then I'll sell it back to you. You there, elf. Where's my armor? And why are you dressed so preposterously? Uh... Are you mistaking me for a servant? What? Oh, uh... You're the one who arrived with the Grey Warden. I... Uh, please, forgive my rudeness. There are so many elves running about, and I've been waiting for... Oh, it's simply been so hectic. Uh, I never thought... P please, pardon my terrible manners. I... I am just the quartermaster. A simple man. No one special. Oh, gosh, my dude. Shut up. Um... What kind of supplies do you have? Arms and armor, for the most part. It's for the King's men, but uh, you Grey Wardens can buy what you need for a modest price. I also have some, uh, goods on the side I can provide. Strictly off the record, of course. To keep morale up, you understand. <laughs> oh? Um, well, let me see your... Let me see what you have. Let me know what you'd like. Alright, time to sell a bunch of things. So, I have my weapons unequipped right now. Actually, I should equip myself first. Right now I'm just wearing my regular clothes, but I'm gonna go ahead and suit back up. There's no option in here to really sort by tier, which is annoying. It sorts by weapon type and then by tier. So I have one axe, a bunch of daggers, one great sword, a bunch of long swords, two maces, and then some bows. Um, I'm gonna equip... I think I'm gonna fight with daggers primarily. So I'm gonna tip... I have one tier 4 dagger called the Edge, which is... Um, so each tier of weapon does slightly more damage, slightly more critical chance, slightly more armor penetration, slightly more damage from strength modifier, it looks like. And this one also has a plus 5 damage bonus, plus 3% critical chance, plus 4 attack. And I also have three tier 3 daggers. Two of which are called Kendall's Ceremonial Dagger, Messy Kills. I think that means higher chance for a death blow, plus 5% critical damage, or Enchanted Dagger, plus 4 attack. I think I like that better. That one's a curved, like a, a wiggly dagger. 
Um, and then I have a studded leather armor set, which is tier two of light armor. Um, I don't think there's a restriction on what type of armor you can wear. Like I technically could wear medium or heavy armor, but it has a higher strength requirement to use, which is not my primary stat. And also gives you fatigue, which is like a stamina penalty um, to all of your abilities. So I'm better with light. And then I have my Fencer's Cinch Belt equipped. Plus two constitution, plus three defense, plus two attack. My heirloom necklace, which is not my heirloom. I picked it up off of a random chest in that noble's house. So it's some human's heirloom. And my <laughs> husband's wedding ring. Uh, I also have a bunch of DLC items here. For now, I'm gonna put on the Lucky Stone which is a DLC ring that gives plus one to all attributes. So that's just a nice across-the-board benefit. All right, now I'll sell some things. Hello again. Is there something you need? Some supplies, perhaps? Let me see what you have. Let me know what you'd like. All right, I'll sell all the weapons that aren't daggers. Uh, not daggers or long swords. I'll sell the medium armor set that I picked up, because I don't need that. Um, I guess I'll sell my wedding clothes for 10 silver. Because I'm, I'm pretty sure I'll be in armor basically the rest of the game. Sell some of these shields I picked up. I'll keep one wooden one and one steel one. Um, I will be having to outfit party members that I acquire eventually, but I've cleared up some inventory space, so that's good. Let's see. The one part of the camp we haven't explored yet is the northwest. Let's see. There's an infirmary here. In the name of Andraste, I bless you today. May you find favor in the Maker's eyes, so let it be. Another priest uh, talking. She's standing in front of a statue. This is a hooded woman holding a bull, not our usual statue. Ah, I suspect you are one of the new Grey Wardens. Will you accept the Maker's blessing? She has blonde hair tied back in a bun, is wearing the um, yellow and pink robes of the Chantry with a sun motif on them. I will, thank you. Then I bless you, Grey Warden, in the name of Andraste and the Maker above. May the chant of light carry your name to the ears of our Lord. Alright. I don't know if my character is religious, but I've been blessed. Uh, there's also somebody with a name here, named Jory. Greetings. You must be the third recruit we've heard about. You've heard about me. Not a great deal. We've been waiting for your arrival, though. Sir Jury is my name. I hailed from Redcliffe, where I served as knight under the command of Arl Aemon. I wasn't aware elves could join the Grey Wardens. Those camped in the valley are all human. Uh, Jory is a white man with male pattern balding hair. Uh, he has brown hair, what's left of it, short cropped. Um, he has some stubble of a beard, uh, sort of a, a, I don't know, a heavy set build. He has uh, scale plate armor. Um, do you have a problem with that? With me being an elf? No, clearly the Grey Wardens pick their recruits on their merits. I hope we're both lucky enough to eventually join the Wardens. Is it not thrilling to be given that chance? I'm curious about the joining ritual. As am I. Has anyone told you about it? Davith said we might be going into the wilds. I never heard of such a ritual. I had no idea there were more tests after getting recruited. I suppose since you're finally here, I'd best get back to Duncan. I shall see you there. Alright, so there's my other fellow recruit. I see another chest. This has a tier one longbow. Alright. Alright. 
Sorry, miss. The army camp is off limits for you right now. Oh, okay. Well, all right. So I can't go further, further west. I guess that's where the actual like bulk of the people are. It's convenient. Um, and there's a prisoner up here, hanging in a like one of those hanging birdcage jail cells. Huh. Someone finally comes and talks to the lone prisoner. I don't suppose you've come to sentence me. You haven't been sentenced. No. They put someone like me in a cage until someone important has time to decide what to do with me. I don't suppose you have a bit of kindness in you. All I want is food and water. They haven't fed me since I was locked up and I'm starving. Tell me why you're in there first. I'm a deserter. Or so they think. I bet there's no arguing them out of it, though. Armies are funny that way. Did you desert? I wasn't deserting. But when you catch someone sneaking around camp in the middle of the night, what else are you gonna think? Does it matter? All I want is a bit of food and water. If you weren't deserting, why sneak around the camp? Oh, I would have deserted eventually. Just not then. I was stealing, not sneaking out of the camp. I got one of those wizards drunk and took his key. It belongs to a chest they got here, full of magical treasures. In fact, I still have it. I can't use it from here, but I trade you for some food and water. I'll see what I can do. Just ask my guard for his. He's still got some dinner. I saw him put it in his coat. So there is a guard here. Uh, the guard is not wearing a coat. Uh, he's wearing a set of chainmail armor with some, um, you know, shoulder pads, thigh pads, chest pad, and such. Lucky dog. You great wardens get to ride with the king while I'm left with the drudgery of guarding this deserter. They should have just hanged him. Put his head on a pike as an example. Who is this prisoner, exactly? They say he was recruited before the war up in Dinnerham. Probably figured he'd never have to fight if he served the king, right? Seems a waste for you to guard him all day. I can't just let him go, can I? The army will figure out what to do with him. Probably just waiting for someone important to make a decision. Then they'll hang him, I expect. And I can go and do something else. I had a chat with him, actually. Don't expect it was an enlightening conversation. He asked for some food and water. Did he now? Since nobody sends me nothing to feed him with, the only way we'll get that is if I give him mine. So I can ask to buy it for 10 silver. I don't remember how much money I made from selling that stuff. Or I can attempt to pass a persuasion check to to just get it. Um, I'll, I'll try the persuasion. So you miss one meal. This man could be hanged soon. All right, all right. I guess the poor fella could stand to have one meal in his belly before he hangs. Don't know why you care. I had nothing to do with it though. If anyone asks why he's burping, I'm gonna say it was you, just so you know. All right, water and food received. The reason I'm taking the time is because I know that there's some good shit in that chest. So? Brought me some food, have you? I'm so hungry I could faint dead away. Here's some food. Much obliged. May Andraste herself rain blessings upon you. And, as I mentioned, here's the key. Use it in good health, huh? Key to mages just received. All right. So over beside Wynne, um, she's standing at one corner of a big purple tent. And between that tent and another one is the chest that this opens. Although right now it's currently guarded by someone. So we'll have to wait until a later date. Let's talk to this guy, though. Welcome, young woman. This guy is labeled as Tranquil. Who are you? I am one of the Tranquil, my friend. I am of the circle of Magi. But instead of casting spells and reading tomes, I spend my time enchanting. It is a time-consuming process, but invaluable. Enchantment provides the circle its wealth. Certainly, we would not get by on charity. You speak very strangely. Why is that? Allow me to put it this way. Do you know why those with magical talent are feared? 
Hmm, several options here. The Chantry claims magic is sinful because the ancient Taventer Imperium was ruled by mages, because magic is powerful and dangerous, or just not entirely, no. Um, why would I think magic is feared? I would say it's because magic is powerful and dangerous. It is dangerous beyond its power. Those with magical talent attract demons and spirits. We can be possessed easily and thus become horrors known as abominations. Even those with minor talents attract hungry spirits. Anyone with the power may learn blood magic from these demons. Hence, we are considered dangerous. This is our curse. Thus, I was made tranquil, stripped of emotions and talent. I am no longer dangerous. How is someone made tranquil? Our forehead is branded with magic, which stills our talent and mind. The process is irreversible as far as I am aware. Sounds like a horrid practice. It might seem such to you, but I feel no horror. I am content to serve in my role. I feel badly for you. You do? I feel nothing. As the name suggests, my existence is quite peaceful. I am alive, productive, and no danger to anyone. Surely that is not a terrible thing. Perhaps we may speak of something else. Do you need assistance? What is enchantment, exactly? It is the practice of folding magical lyrium into items first practiced by the dwarves. The Tranquil have learned their runes, and we use them to apply a variety of magical effects. We create the glow lights, as well as the magic staff, or the flaming blade. The irony, perhaps, is that it is our very disconnection to our former talents that allows the Tranquil to work with Lyrium so. A true mage could not. What sorts of enchantments are there? Runes exist that hold the power of the elements that increase strength or swiftness. Almost any spell can be given permanency, given enough skill and lyrium. Naturally, the greater the power required, the more expensive the rune will become to create. True power comes with a price, as we know only too well. I should go. Goodbye. Codex on the Tranquil. Alright, so the last place I have to explore here in the camp is the northern part of the western side, which I know is where I'm going to find the quest that I'm doing, the Grey Warden Alistair. So instead I'm going to take a moment to run back to the west side. Um, there's, an, there's a unique item here in the camp that I need to pick up, because I hate missing out on things. And I didn't explore the west side thoroughly. There's really not much over there, just a few ambient NPCs. And I thought this item was on the east. But I was wrong. So I'm running back across the bridge. Alright. Also pick up one elf root on the way. running down the slope to the southern side of the west. This side is definitely more ruined than the... Am I saying the word west? This is the east side. The west side is where the people are. The east side is ruined. Alright, this sack has an iron ring. That's nothing. There it is. Beef bone. It is a gift for a dog. Uh, we will eventually have a dog. I needed to get that. There's also an unlockable chest over here. Right. With a mushroom in it. Why did you lock up your mushroom? It's not that precious. I mean, mushrooms are good, but... Not worth putting a... A lock on. Whatever. 
All right, that's what I needed. Time to run back to the west. ran into a tree when I wasn't looking there. All right, and we're back on the west side in the camp, running up to the north. This is a large, it looks like it used to be maybe a throne room or a hall of some sort. There's columns down each side. The roof is completely crumbled away. But columns, archways, arched windows in a wall that's half standing. Uh, there's a bunch of servants. Ah, this is the War Council, as a sign is helpfully telling me. There's a bunch of servants standing around. There's a chest. Um, hey bud, what's in here? Six copper. Sorry. It's mine now. Alright, and then up another little ramp into maybe a temple area? A little shrine area? Uh, it has two statues on either side. Or one statue on either side. Um, a indistinct human figure holding some sort of staff with uh, a swirly thing at the top. Hard to describe. Alright, here's, here's our quest. What is it now? Haven't Grey Wardens asked more than enough of the Circle? I simply came to deliver a message from the revered mother, Sir Maid. She desires your presence. What her reverence desires is of no concern to me. I am busy helping the Grey Wardens by the King's orders, I might add. Should I have asked her to write a note? Tell her I will not be harassed in this manner. Yes, I was harassing you by delivering a message. Your glibness does you no credit. Here I thought we were getting along so well. I was even going to name one of my children after you. The Grumpy One. Enough. I will speak to the woman if I must. Get out of my way, fool. You know, one good thing about the Blight is how it brings people together. So this is a tan-skinned guy. Uh, he has red blonde hair, uh, short and spiky in the front. He's wearing the blue and silver Grey Warden armor, um, which is a, a padded, you know, gambeson with a, a scale mail piece that hangs down over the front, and then plates over the chest and shoulders, uh, is what his is. Sorry, what? Oh, nothing. Just trying to find a bright side to all this. Wait, we haven't met, have we? I don't suppose you happen to be another mage. We haven't met. You must be Alistair. And that makes you Duncan's new recruit, I suppose. Glad to meet you. As the junior member of the Order, I'll be accompanying you when you prepare for the joining. Pleased to meet you. My name's Bryony. Right. That was the name. You know, it just occurred to me that there have never been many women in the Grey Wardens. I wonder why that is. This game is very ironic. It tells you up front Men and women are treated like equals in Ferelden. Their place in society is completely the same. And then they're just relentlessly sexist to you the entire game. Uh, which is, which is fun. Fun and good. Um, you want more women in the Wardens, do you? Would that be so terrible? Not that I'm some drooling lecher or anything. Please stop looking at me like that. So I'm curious. Have you ever actually encountered Darkspawn before? No, I haven't. When I fought my first one, I wasn't prepared for how monstrous it was. I can't say I'm looking forward to encountering another. Anyhow, whenever you're ready, let's get back to Duncan. I imagine he's eager to get things started. That argument I saw, what was it about? With the mage. The circle is here at the king's request, and the Chantry doesn't like that one bit. They just love letting mages know how unwelcome they are. Which puts me in a bit of an awkward position. I was once a Templar. What's a Templar? You don't know? Quick version then. 
The Chantry tries to control mages because they're dangerous. So they keep Templars that train to hunt down and kill apostates. That's what I was being trained as when Duncan recruited me six months ago. I'm sure the revered mother meant it as an insult, sending me as her messenger. And the mage picked right up on that. I never would have agreed to deliver it, but Duncan says we're all to cooperate and get along. Apparently they didn't get the same speech. <laughs> totally non-biased exposition. Yeah, um, everything we hear from Alistair is definitely going to be from a very uh, Chantry point of view. Um, all right, well, I can say you don't have to accompany me, do you? That's kind of rude. Um, what about the other recruits? Dabith and Sir Jory are here in the camp. Have you met them? Yes, both of them. That makes things easy, then. They'll both be back with Duncan by now. Um, I look forward to traveling with you. You do? Huh, that's a switch. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, lead on. Alright, Alistair has joined the party, and I've already gained plus two approval points. Uh, so Alistair's going to be a permanent companion, which means he does have approval. Which is measured on a scale from plus 100 to minus 100. Tooltip here says, party members' approval changes based on plot decisions or gifts. High approval provides combat bonuses and possible romance options, while low approval may lead a party member to desert you. So we've got a, got a whole plus two. And we can sort out his levels and such. I uh, won't do that yet. He's with us now. Uh, there's an unlockable chest up here. Tier 1 longbow... Tier 1 Flame Rune, Tier 1 Slow Rune. We won't get to be able to enchant things for a while, but that's cool. Cool to have. Alright, gonna run back into the camp. I'm, I'm pretty sure I know where Duncan is. He's near the King's Tent and the... Yeah, well, he has a giant white arrow over his head now, so that's obvious. And Davith and Jory are here, too. Alright, Duncan's standing next to a big campfire uh, in the middle of four statues. Four statues? One, two, three, four, five, six statues. Uh, each identical, a hooded woman holding a sword uh, with both hands pointed upwards in front of her. This seems to be the ruin of some, I don't know, gazebo type place? It's not very big. It's big enough for his little fire. Hi, Duncan. You found Alistair, did you? Good. I'll assume you're ready to begin preparations. Assuming, of course, that you're quite finished riling up mages, Alistair. What can I say? The revered mother ambushed me. The way she wields guilt, they should stick her in the army. She forced you to sass the mage, did she? We cannot afford to antagonize anyone, Alistair. We don't need to give anyone more ammunition against us. You're right, Duncan. I apologize. Now then, since you're all here, we can begin. You four will be heading into the Kokari Wilds to perform two tasks. The first is to obtain three vials of Darkspawn blood, one for each recruit. What do we need Darkspawn blood for? For the joining itself. I'll explain more once you've returned. Uh, was Duncan's voice actor in Kingdom Hearts? Probably. Let me see. Um, I say probably because this voice actor, Pierre Renaday, um, who also has an Americanized name, Peter Renaday, is a very well-known voice actor. Video games. Um, he's Al Mualim from Assassin's Creed. That's where I know him from. Uh, his Wikipedia page has, like, several dozen credits on it. He's also been in quite a few movies and TV shows. So there's a solid chance that we've all heard him before. Um, okay, I'll explain more once you've returned. And what's the second task? 
There was once a Grey Warden archive in the wilds, abandoned long ago when we could no longer afford to maintain such remote outposts. It has recently come to our attention that some scrolls have been left behind, magically sealed to protect them. Alistair, I want you to retrieve these scrolls if you can. What kind of scrolls are these? Old treaties, if you're curious. Promises of support made to the Grey Wardens long ago. They were once considered only formalities. With so many having forgotten their commitments to us, I suspect it may be a good idea to have something to remind them with. And what if they're no longer there? It's possible the scrolls may have been destroyed or even stolen, though the seal's magic should have protected them. Only a Grey Warden can break such a seal. I don't understand. Why leave such things in a ruin if they're so valuable? It was assumed that we would someday return. A great many things were assumed that have not held true. Is this part of our joining too? No, but the effort must be made. I have every confidence you are up to the task. Find the archive and three vials of blood. Understood. Watch over your charges, Alistair. Return quickly and safely. We will. Then may the Mako watch over your path. I will see you when you return. New quest, Tainted Blood. New quest, The Grey Warden's Cache. And we now have all three of them as party members. So ourself, Alistair, Davith, and Jory. So I'm gonna have to spend a bit of time here doing equipment and level ups. So Bryony is a double weapon rogue. Alistair is a sword and shield fighter. Uh, he has a Grey Warden longsword and shield already. And a Grey Warden heavy armor set. All at tier 2, so that's good. Um, let me check accessories for him. He has a worry token, like a, a fidget stone, in his ring slot. Restricted to him, plus two willpower, plus two cunning, plus eight percent spirit resistance. I'm gonna give him the Mark of Vigilance amulet, which is a DLC item, plus six defense, plus two percent spell resistance, plus five mental resistance. Um, and the Embry's Many Pockets belt, again, this is a DLC item, plus five percent resistance to fire, cold, electricity, nature, and spirit damage, and the um, Band of Fire ring, plus three constitution, plus 25% fire resistance, plus 10% spirit resistance. Basically, I'm making him a tank. Like, that's, that's his function, um, mostly when I play. Sword and shield tank. Then we have Davith, who currently has a tier three. Um, yeah, leather armor set. Uh, and has, he has dual daggers, but I'm instead gonna give him a bow, because I'm daggers. So I'm gonna give him a Grey Warden crossbow, which is tier two plus two damage to darkspawn. And then Chori has a tier two greatsword, which is, yeah, I don't have any other greatswords, so that's good. Um, and he has a medium armor set, so he'll be my damage. Well, he and I will both be damaged. Oh, I didn't give Davith accessories, okay. Davith will have the Guildmaster's Belt, plus three cunning, plus five percent chance to dodge. The, um, I'll give him Amulet of the War Mage, plus five percent damage of all elemental types. I don't know if that's plus five percent if you're already doing those types of damage, or plus five percent like, even if you're just doing normal damage. But, we'll see. The Wicked Oath Ring. Plus two armor penetration, plus one stamina regen, plus 10% critical damage. 
And then Jory gets the Pearl of the Anointed amulet, plus one to all attributes, plus five percent money gain. The Cinch of Skillful Maneuvering. Oh wait, that's also a plus one to attributes. Do those stack? Yes, they do. Plus one to attributes, plus 10% chance to dodge, 10% spell resistance. And the Dalish Promise Ring, plus one health regen, plus 15% healing received. Okay. That's it for equipment. Now for levels. Everyone is starting, you know, coming to us with level one stats. Uh, that is a mod I have installed, which prevents the game from auto-leveling any followers to your current level. Because I like to micromanage. So I'm gonna put Alistair's strength straight up to 20. I'm gonna give him 16 con, 12 willpower, and 18 dex. Uh, no magic. Although, um, the magic stat also determines how effective potions and poultices are. So if you have a high magic skill, you can get more use out of a potion. And I haven't given him any cunning, which is about like finding critical chance. But he's tanky, so he's not gonna get that. All right, four skills, four skill points. I'm gonna give him two levels of combat training. Um, and one level of survival and one level of tactics. And then, all right, warriors have access to a ton of weapon talents. So they get the warrior tree, which is two rows of four talents. Then they also get access to the dual weapon and archery trees, which the rogue has as well. Then they also have the weapon and shield tree and the two-handed tree. And all of these weapon trees are three rows of four skills. So they could learn, you know, 12 talents in each category. Obviously there aren't that many levels but they have a wide variety of weapons available to them. He also already has the Templar specialization, which is its own four point tree. So the first one is Righteous Strike. Uh, max level, I believe is 20. Um, it is a max level by the amount of experience available in the game. Like, you can't grind, there are no random encounters. So it is a max level, not by cap. Oh, the maximum level is 25. Okay. I just googled it. Um, it's a bit d, &D. It's It's a little bit d, &D. It's sort of in that role-playing game tradition of um, d, d Baldur's Gate... Um, sort of old-style RPGs. Similar concepts. Alright, so he has the first level Templar talent, which makes it so that each of the Templars melee hits against an enemy. Enemy spellcaster drains its mana by 0.25 times damage dealt. So he basically drains spellcasters when he hits them. Then... Let's see what I can do with weapon and shield talents. I can give him shield bash and shield pummel. Um, I won't read out the stats. These aren't very interesting. And then the shield defense sustained mode. And the shield block passive bonus. Shield block, enemies can no longer flank the character on the shield side and the character gains plus five defense. With the shield, and then I'll give him the warrior passive, powerful, plus 25 health and a 10% fatigue reduction from armor. So there's Alistair. I'll give him the default defender tactics for now. Davith will be our archer, so I'm gonna up his dex to 20. Cunning, 16. Strength, I don't know, 14. Con 12. Two levels of weapon training. Um, see, I don't want to give him crafting talents because um, 
Uh, I happen to know that he won't be in the party very long. He's not a permanent character. So I guess I'll just give him a level of tactics and a level of survival. Um, he already has the dirty fighting, which is a default for all rogues. Let's you kick someone in the nuts to stun them. So for archery talents, I can give him pinning shot and crippling shot. The rapid shot sustained mode and the shattering shot talent. Um, I'll give him the melee archer passive. That allows the archer to fire without interruption even when being attacked. Which is helpful. If you don't want to micromanage your archer so that they stay out of combat always. And activating the archer tactics for him will fill in all of his five tactic slots. So that's good. That's something. Jory. He will be our damage dealer. I'm going to up his strength to 20. Constitution, 14. Willpower, 14. He'll need a lot of willpower for stamina for his specials. Um, I guess cunning, 12. I'll give him an extra crit chance. Two levels combat training. I'm just going to give all these guys the same, I guess. One of tactics, one of survival. And he's going to be two-handed, so he's going to get Mighty Blow, Sunder Arms, and Pommel Strike. As well as the Sustained Mode Indomitable. The character remains in control on the battlefield, graining plus three defense. Nope. Plus three damage, plus five attack, and plus five defense, being immune to slip, stun, and knockdown effects. Uh, but it costs 50 stamina for upkeep. That's the, <laughs> that's the drawback. It takes a good chunk out of your stamina pool. I'll give him the powerful passive as well. Plus 25 health, minus 10% fatigue. Jory. <coughs> Sorry about that. Alright. So everyone's got some basic tactics. I'll deal with that if we find ourselves getting into trouble. I still have the game set on easy, so we probably won't. Let us save the game, first of all. Save game. New save. Heading to the wilds. And we're going to be heading out the southwestern gate of the camp. Um, right click for area transition. Hail. I'm told you all have business in the wilds. The gate's open for you. Just be careful out there. Even a Grey Warden won't be safe in the forest tonight. And here we go. Area unlocked, Korkari Wilds. Um, so our map is Fog of War out because we have not explored this area yet, unlike Ostagar, which we had the map of from the start. So this is a, a very wetland area. There are scraggly pine trees standing up from still pools of water all around. It's very gray, gray, green, hazy atmosphere. Uh, there's some a bare hint of a path that we're running along. Um, and a pack of wolves. All right, all of which are green tier, so a lot of them, right. but not very. Strong. I'm gonna say this is about I don't know 
seven wolves running up at us. Of course, everyone's centered around the one that I attacked. Oh, come on, guys. Try it. Spread out. Let's make this quick, shall we? We must be victorious! Well, there's just things. Just keep coming. You never had a chance. No, they did not. All right, so we now have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine wolves. Uh, five of which we can loot. On it. Health poultice. Lyrium potion. Wolf pelt. Wolf pelt. Wolf pelt. Wolf pelt. I don't know why one of them dropped a magic potion. Um, I'm I'm keeping tab held to highlight interactables because otherwise the wilds are kind of unreadable. Everything's just gray and green and hazy. Um, I see a body lying in a pool of water called Missionary Jogby. I'll loot him for a letter. New codex, letter to Jogby. New quest, the missionary. Codex. My dearest son, it pleases me that you wish to follow in my footsteps and bring the maker's word to the unenlightened. I wish you had chosen a less dangerous place to do so. Apologies for leaving early for the wild, son, but I wanted to set up camp and get things started. The chase and respect one with survival skills in the wilds, so I hope to get a grip on that before you arrived and maybe establish an agreement with the local tribe so that we had friends when you came. When you reach the wilds, you'll find it difficult to navigate. I've listed certain landmarks below. If you follow them, they will lead you to a location I've scouted out, where I've left you some supplies. If you're lost, try to get back to that spot and I'll find you. The landmarks are as follows, beginning at the entrance to the wilds from Ostagar. Look for a tree leaning on a ruined building. Pass under a fallen tree bridge Pass a submerged tower on the right. Look between a high ruined arch and a mossy standing stone. Walk along a path of roots and stones. Look for two large statues with a chest between them. There you will find our meeting point. I love you, Jogby, my son. I hope to see you soon. Your father, Rigby. So our quest is... You found a corpse near the entrance to the Korkari Wilds. A letter on the corpse detailed a path through the wilds that should lead to the place where the deceased is meant to meet his father. Consult the note for more information. Okay. So there's a path we're to follow. Um, Over here. Oh, there's somebody, there's somebody uh, on the ground out here between a broken off half of a cart um, and another broken off half of a cart, although I don't know that they're the same. There's some barrels on the ground and a uh, dead cow. This guy's crawling along Who the ground. Who is that? Grey Wardens? Well, he's not half as dead as he looks, is he? My scouting band was attacked by Darkspawn. They came out of the ground. Please help me. I've got to return to camp. He's uh, covered in blood. Doesn't look too good. We can take you back. If you just bandage me up, I can get back myself. I have bandages in my pack. Thank you. Oh. I, I've got to get out of here. Stepping aside to let him limp back towards the way we came. Did you hear? An entire patrol of seasoned men killed by Darkspawn. Calm down, Sir Jory. We'll be fine if we're careful. Those soldiers were careful, and they were still overwhelmed. How many Darkspawn can the four of us slay? A dozen? A hundred? There's an entire army in these forests. There are Darkspawn about, but we're in no danger of walking into the bulk of the Horde. How do you know? I'm not a coward, but this is foolish and reckless. Oh, you're not, are you? We should go back. We're far from helpless here. We'll be fine. I still do not relish the thought of encountering an army. Know this. All Grey Wardens can sense Darkspawn. Whatever their cunning, I guarantee they won't take us by surprise. 
That's why I'm here. You see, Sir Knight, we might die, but we'll be warned about it first. That is reassuring. That doesn't mean I'm here to make this easy, however. So let's get a move on. <laughs> All right. So we'll be warned about it first. Um, I do see bodies of... Um, this must be the patrol he's talking about, littered on the ground. And off the path here, at the root of a tree that's leaning against a tower, is a flower that we've been asked to get for the uh, Kennel Master. A little white flower with a red center. Waltz flower received. Oh, and we've just entered combat, which means I didn't see the, uh, <laughs> the group of darkspawn we're running towards. So through this... Next to this little tower, there's the remnants of a big archway uh, that's broken off, and ahead of it is a ridge um, facing us that five darkspawn are standing along. Two herlocks, which are a larger size, sort of human-sized, and three gemlocks, which are small, dwarf-sized. I'm gonna head for one of these herlocks. The three gemlocks all have bows. Firing at us from the <laughs> On it. <laughs> we are taking this out way fun. too easily. I'm gonna have to up the difficulty. These are all orange tier enemies. And we're taking them down like it's nothing. Let's get started. <laughs> Time for some fun! <laughs> Show me what you've got! <laughs> Codex updated. Genlock. These are the most common darkspawn in the underground. Stocky and tough, genlocks are notoriously difficult to kill, even by magic. And herlock. Taller than their genlock cousins, the herlocks are roughly human-sized, but are possessed of considerable strength and constitution. The shock troop of the darkspawn, a single berserking herlock, can often be a match for numerous opponents at once. They are nor known to adorn themselves with roughly carved tattoos to keep track of their kills and deeds, Though it is unknown whether or not there is a uniform standard to these markings. All right. One of the genlocks was carrying 53 coppers. The other one was carrying a garnet. And the third one, we can actually get a vial of blood off. The herlocks, let me run back down the ridge. One of them, we can get 54 copper, a vial of blood, and a lyrium potion. Why does everyone carry magic potions? The other one has a health poultice. I also see an elf root off in the distance. I gotta go pick that. Looks like there's a side passage around here. We're running... So the main trail goes south. We're now running west. My keyboard just stopped working. Hold on. Oh, I accidentally turned on the developer console. Whoops! I was typing in a command that was www. <laughs> Run forward! Oh, I see we're coming up on some dark spawn over here as well. Cursed creatures! Alright. Mm, one, two, three, four, five, six genlocks, one herlock. Many with bows. Oh, that one was shooting fire arrows! Hey! This should be easy enough. I just love love in the combat. You're getting sloppy! On you! Try your press! Alright! Let's go! seeing any death blows on the dark spawn yet. We need to watch more closely, but certainly not as frequent as the ones we're seeing on the human enemies. Uh, I think we've now collected three vials of blood. On it. Let's get started. Um, game audio. Yeah, so <laughs> this is with a mod that turns right. battle audio down. Um, in the vanilla game, when you get into battle, the Let's get battle music is, like, blasting your ears out. Like, if your normal volume 
is what you can hear, like, sitting in front of a desk. You would be able to hear the battle music across an entire house. So I already have it turned down. I don't know how to turn down the battle sound effects specifically without turning down the sound effects in the entire game. Um, but if that needs to be done, then I, I will go ahead and turn down sound effects in general. But rest assured, I'm probably not saying much important in battle. Um, okay, so the, the dark spawn here, we're standing near another ruined set of arches. There is a couple of tents pitched, a couple of broken chests. I see a barrel and a sack lying on the ground, um, and a chest, half buried in the dirt. It has a studded leather armor chest piece, an amulet called the Mud Idol, cold resistance and cold damage, and Rigby's Field Journal. New Codex, Signs of the Chastened. The Chastened Barbarians are nothing if not clever. They have hidden markers and signs in the arrangements of stones and rubble along the paths of the wilds. In this way, they mark trails, note places of interest, and even give warnings in a way that outsiders cannot understand. Interestingly, these markers look indistinguishable from a regular pile of stones. I have dedicated my time to deciphering these signs, and I believe I'm close to a breakthrough. The trail markers seem to point to a horde. Uh, note here, the word horde that has been used is spelled H-O-R-D-E, like a army, but I believe it means a horde, H-O-A-R-D, like a cache. Um, seem to point to a horde or a location used for secret storage among the chastened. I have only found a portion of the message, however. I think that if I could complete the message, find all of the trail markers, I could find this cache and see what treasure the chastened have to hide. I have found one such marker near this camp, under a fallen tree leaning against the ruins. Each marker seems to point to one or two others. I hear rumors that a darkspawn horde is coming. I hope I can find this treasure before it's too late. Well, you want to bet it's too late. All right, let's look for this trail sign. Um, so it is highlighted as interactable. There is a tree sort of half uprooted out of the ground and under it, there is an invisible hitbox for me to click on. Uh, somewhere, a very small hitbox. There it is. Right. And that has invisibly activated two other markers on my map. So if I look on the map here, they're marked with little X's. One is, if we backtrack a bit, back around this curve that we took off the main path, there's one up a hill here in a bush. This should be What's easy this? enough. Each time I do this, a, a very faint little horn is sounding arcing that we've done it. Otherwise, there's no feedback from the game. Like, there's not a quest log that's updating with this. Or anything. Let's see. Alright, time to get back to the main trail. So we have this little tower with a tree leaning against it. We have these arches where this ridge was. And this ridge um, leads up to... Oh, there's a death root plant up here. I'll pick that. As you wish. And a giant tree that's fallen from one ridge to the other, uh, across a sort of gap. Uh, we can't walk over it. We can walk under it. Oh, there's bodies hanging from it. Look there, poor slobs. That just seems so excessive. The darkspawn must have taken humans. Yeah, human prisoners and hung them here. They are basically skeletons in armor. Um, up the left ridge, I see the remains of a dog kennel. A couple of wooden crates I can loot. Oh! And some darkspawn. Two herlocks, two genlocks. Only one just dead! <laughs> Just me, or do you actually think you have a chance? All right. The only one 
who was carrying anything was the Genlock. One of the Genlocks had 57 copper and a health poultice. What's that sound? Right. Well, anyway, there's two crates. One has a mushroom, one has a studded leather armor chest piece. Oh! There's a, a Genlock assassin. There's a rogue popping out of stealth right here. How about that? I think we work well together. Thanks, Alistair. When it's uh, four humans against one Genlock, we do sure work well together. It has 51 copper. There's an unlockable chest with a dark spawn shield. And right. a crate with an elf rib. All right. Oh, I also see another rogue. Genlock rogue On it. firing arrows at us. Hey. And a herlock. Oh, these guys were up on a hill. We're now off off the path to the east, and there's a hill further east where these guys from. Yeah, my party members are running up there. Alright! That's it! I'm gonna loot these genlocks. One of them has an acidic coating, which is a weapon coating. The other one has 51 copper. Up here, there's a bunch of dead wolves, a couple of dead darkspawn. I wonder if the darkspawn were fighting the wolves? That'd be cool. Mutual hostiles. As you wish. I can loot On two it. wolf pelts. And up at the very top of this hill, there's the very, like, very small ruin of a little temple or shrine or something around um round stone pedestal with a few columns remnants of columns and the body of missionary rigby let's get started carrying rigby's last will and testament to whoever finds this note this is the last will and testament of Rigby the Missionary, proud speaker of the Maker's word. I have come to the wilds to speak the chant, but I fear I will die here at the hands of the Darkspawn. I leave all that I came with to my wife, Jetta. Should the reader of this note feel charitable, I have buried a sealed lockbox in our camp, nestled in a Tevinter ruin in the western reaches of the wilds. It is my will that this lockbox finds my wife in Redcliffe, and that it is still sealed shut when it reaches her. To my wife and my son, I apologize that my work has taken me from you, but know that I die in the service to the Maker, Rigby. Poor guy. A chest near him as well, containing a pair of chainmail gloves. So that camp, I think is the camp we were just at where we found the first trail marker. Let me go back there. So I now need to go from east of the path to... Nope. Yes. From east of the path to west of the path. Doing a lot of backtracking here. But at least the enemies don't respawn. Yep. Yeah. I see the interactable hidden cache. It's uh, buried in the campfire, which is, seems unsafe. You rummage around in the rubble and find Rigby's secret cache. Inside is an iron lockbox sealed with wax. Uh, I can choose to take it or I can choose to open it. Um, yeah, I'm an honest woman. I'll take it without opening it. You stow the lockbox in your pack. Continue. All right, quest updated. You found the cache mentioned in Rigby's last will and testament. Deliver it to Jetta in Redcliffe to complete Rigby's last wish. It will be a long time before we make it there. I see an elf root. I'm gonna pick an elf root. Up oh, there's some dark spawn. Approach. Watch for their blood. This is. Four genlocks on a ridge and a herlock in the 
uh, valley between that ridge and another small one. And go for the herlock. On your guard! I hope these guys are shooting fire <laughs> Only one shall stand! <laughs> Less fighting, more dying, blast you! Another point. Alright. One Lyrian potion. A pair of chainmail boots. A garnet. 51 copper. And I'll finally go pick my elf root. Uh, elf root is mainly used to craft healing po poultices when you have a character who can do so. Alright, I think we're finally going to get back on the trail. So we're now coming back to the underpass beneath that fallen tree. We'll actually go through it instead of beside it. I see an elf root. Hearing a lot of squirrels. I haven't seen one. There's a bit more of a beaten track down here. Oh, never mind. Going off to the side again. I think that sound means something's in stealth. Yep. There's a rogue. Two rows. We are blazing! We are that awesome! Oh, I see a, a marker of a trail sign. This is in a bush on a little hill. Right. That has activated two more that we'll actually have to backtrack for. Checking the map to see the X's. One is up on the... Well, if we're coming from the south, it's on the right side of those two hills with the tree between them. Up by the dog crate. I wonder why there's a dog crate just out in the swamp. And then one, I think, near where we found the body of Rigby. Around to the east. Yeah. Actually, right about where those two uh, rogues just attacked us. What's that? What is it indeed, Alistair? Alright, back to the trail. Just to the right of the trail, there is a set of ruined arches, much shorter than usual. These ones are only like twice human height instead of like ten times human height. There's a small walkable path of roots and rocks here, which I believe is the path that we were told to follow by the letter. Walk along a path of roots and stones. I'll do this. That'd make an interesting pet. <laughs> She's talking about wolves. There's a there's a wolf pack up here. I'll make an interesting pet. You know what? You're As right. You, wish. you should have a wolf. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> right there. There's an elf wolf here, which is yellow rank, is right to the usual. There are official names for the for the ranks. I don't remember them. 
I'm just gonna refer to them by colors. Wolf Pelt, Lyrium Potion, Wolf Pelt. Lesser Health Poultice, Wolf Pelt, Wolf Pelt. And an iron chest between two statues holding spears. Chastened Flat Blade, a tier two greatsword. Heavy chainmail, gray iron, and a letter. Um, why do wolves have magic potions? I don't know. I don't know why everyone in this game carries magic potions. Um, the lore, <laughs> the lore of the game is that mages are like, uh, isolated and feared by everyone, and then everyone you fight, uh, holds magic potions. At least they're not dropping like armor sets, I guess. A uh, new codex. Farewell letter to Jogby. My dear son, Jogby, I fear this is the last letter I will write you. I have had difficulty finding the chastened to bring them the Maker's world word. I have, however, seen evidence of their passing. They appear to have left this area in great haste, possibly fleeing the so-called Darkspawn that are rumored to be gathering in the wilds in greater numbers. I have left you a weapon and everything else I can spare, my son. I will try to find you once I have found a safe place. I only hope that you will be safe. With luck, we will meet again. If you see her, tell your mother that I love her and take care of our family. Your loving father, Rigby. <sighs> they both died. Uh, we found the, the sun very close to the entrance to Ostagar. Oh, I leveled up a while back. I haven't applied that yet. Let me, let me do that. I'm up my dex to 20 and constitution to 12. I don't know why I like even numbers. I really like even numbers. And I can upgrade a skill. I'm gonna give myself stealing level one. Stealing is fun. For a weapon talent. Um, I believe this is me being level four, so I can get second level lock picking, which is useful. I can get second level passive two weapon training, which is also very useful. I could get first level stealth, although frankly I don't use stealth much in this game. Um, or I can get combat movement, which gives me a better angle on backstabs. Increasing the angle from 90 to 180 degrees of being behind someone. Uh, I'm gonna go for lock picking because it will not be long before we start encountering hard locks. And I want them. I have hit an autosave. That's a good reminder. Save game. And I see another trail sign. Oh, and a, ooh, a Herlock Emissary. That's a spellcaster. Those are the worst. As you wish. Also a Genlock Rogue coming in from the side. I've uh, reached the Emissary. So he was standing on a little wooden bridge. A slat bridge across part of the water that must be a bit deeper. When I've ran at him, he's starting to run away. Dead yet? I'll fight the rogue instead. Trap. Oh no. Come now, trap. defend yourself! Trap! Alright, hold on. Everyone, uh, stop moving. Just, uh, sponge damage for a bit. Trap! Yeah, gotta piss on these traps. They're little trap. bear traps. Like ah. traps. Trap! Alistair managed to trigger one anyway. There's a second emissary here in the distance. Push them back! Alistair sure got it before I got there. Good job, guys. It's a gotcha! Dead yet? Alright. 
that was quite a fight. I can't believe Alistair managed to stick his foot in a trap, even while I was actively disarming them. So back at the beginning here, we had a trail sign. Let me find the hitbox for that. If we missed one, I believe if we get here, that should be the last one. I need to run back a bit. Let's see. Looting. 47 copper. 40 copper. 48 copper. This should be easy enough. 56 copper. Yeah, sure is easy, huh? Uh, dead soldier. This is not someone we killed. Pouch of ashes. Excerpt from local myths and legends. New codex. A pinch of ashes. Torn from a book on local myths and legends. The Korkari wilds are rife with legends and myths that have amazed and confounded scholars since the fall of Ostagar in ancient times. One such mystery lies behind the tale of Astia and Nebinar, two young lovers who lived in Ostagar. The legend says that Astia grew up in the company of Gazarath, a spirit of the earth bound to an overhang on the bank of a lake in the Korkari wilds. Gazarath began to fancy her, and they spent much of their days together, talking and laughing. Over the years, however, Astia became a woman and began to seek the company of men. When Astia met Nebunar, the two fell in love, and Astia hoped to bring her lover to see her spirit friend. But the spirit, angered and jealous, bade her be gone. Gazarath told her that she would never see it again until she brought her lover's ashes and sprinkled them over the spot. Astia was horrified, and she fled from the enraged spirit. But she began to miss Gazarath, and on the day Nebinar asked her to marry him, she cut her beloved's throat, burned him, and brought his ashes to Gazarath, knowing that their marriage would forever sever her ties to her, to her dear spirit friend. There are legends among the chastened that Gazarath still haunts that lake, and that those who sprinkle the ashes of the deceased over the right spot can summon the spirit. In memory of the contract with its beloved Astia, Gazaroth will grant a single wish and then vanish, never to be heard from again. A note is scribbled in the margin beneath the page. Marcus, I think this is real. If you take the ashes I gave you and scatter them over a pile of rocks on an overhang overlooking that half-sunk Tevinter dome, maybe Gazaroth will appear and give you a wish. If the battle takes you there, I think it's worth a try. So we've received this pouch of ashes. You know what that means, lads. Um, I think that's... So there's a pretty clear path of walkable land here to the left. I think that's where we're going. Um, there's no way whatsoever that this can go wrong. We're about to summon a demon for fun and profit. There's a death root growing next to the rocks, so that's good. Uh, this sunken to Vinterdome is, is quite something. Is literally the top dome of a of a large building with statues on the four corners. Well, not four corners, four axes, sort of north, south, east, and west of the dome. Uh, and a pile of rocks. You see a pile of stones covered in a fine layer of dust and ash. Sprinkle more ash on the pile of stones. Throw some dust in the air. Look around. Combat begins. Who summons Gazarath from slumber? Who summons Gazarath from slumber? I didn't need to read that. We have a, a demon here. It is a humanoid, I guess, uh, figure covered in purple, sort of wrinkly, gross skin. Its head, instead of where a human neck would be, it has a sort of hood-like extension of, of skin coming forward to one eye and a really creepy mouth with teeth. No! Hurry, stick and kill! Don't say I didn't fool you! And of course, we're on easy, so it died in like 10 seconds. I can loot him for a tier 2 sword and tier 2 chainmail. This should be easy enough. And a pair of tier 3 mage boots, uh, restricted to mages. Plus 2 dexterity, plus 6 defense. 
Cool, 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 cool. Glad we stole a demon's boots. Alright, there was one more darkspawn to loot from that battle, and then I think we have to backtrack a bit. On it. To find one last chastened trail sign. The emissary has a lyrium potion, a greater lyrium potion, a darkspawn staff, and an amethyst. That's actually sensible loot for a spellcaster. This should be easy enough. And there was a genlock with 45 copper. All right. So there's one part of the map before this that we didn't unfog. A little bit to the west. This map is sort of, up to this point, has been sort of shaped like a figure eight. A, well, no, that's not what a figure eight is. A main path going through and then two loops on either side. So I'm guessing that the second loop on the left, on the west, where we haven't quite unfogged, is our missing- yep, missing trail sign. Uh, something's in stealth. There it is. That's a lot of blood. It sure is. One of them's carrying a death root extract, which is a weapon coating. Uh, my inventory's full. Let me see. I'm gonna throw away a darkspawn shield. I'm not gonna use that. And a three random daggers tier two minor tier three a rogue with a health poultice 57 copper another one with a health poultice items of the same type that are consumable take the same inventory slot so like i can can i can carry an infinite number of health poultices of the same type while using one inventory slot which is great mm, what's this all right, there's my last trail sign. Now I have a quest for them. Chasen trail signs. The trail signs of the Chasen have alerted you to an old cache in the Korkari wilds. Um, but armor and weapons and accessories and things like that, even if you're carrying duplicates of the same item, do take separate inventory slots, which is annoying because I like to hold everything. Alright, so I'm back across this little wooden bridge. Back to where we were led into a bunch of traps. And off to the right is a little hidden area. There's a fire burning. Which is... Uh, something's in stealth. Where is it? One rogue. Time. Two rogues. For some time. Four rogues. Larium potion. Fifty six copper. Health boltus. How much money do I have by now? Two gold, 28 copper, 30... Uh, nope. Two gold, 28 silver, 30 copper. Um, they are not very good at stealth. They On it. do grumble very much when they're in stealth. Uh, and here's the cache, which is in a hollowed out log around this campfire. Oh, there's a bunch of stuff in here. I don't have enough space for it. Alright. Tier 3 mace. Tier 1 Maul, Tier 3 Bow, Tier 1 Helmet, Chasen Shaman Robes, which is a, a mage robe. Uh, very good. 2 Dex, 2 Constitution, 9 Defense, 5% Dodge Chance, 6% Spell Resistance. 
And then three gems. A topaz, a malachite, and a quartz. Um, yeah, the campfire is burning. I... I'm... My guess is that it's... The darkspawn made the fire? Because it certainly is not a human... Or tribes people. I mean, the tribes people are also humans. Um, it's not an army fire. Or anything like that. Alright. I've looted all that stuff. I destroyed a few... Little... Uh, tier 1 weapons and armor to make room. Unfortunately, there's no way to just, like, throw things on the ground, like in Skyrim or something. Uh, yeah, my only explanation that I can think of is it's a dark spawn fire, because... I mean, I guess they make fires. They're semi-intelligent. They're intelligent enough to strategize, at least, like, they let us into those traps. Alright, time to keep going. So we're now... We're now at the southernmost part of our map, and the path sort of curves around... around a large stretch of water. And we're coming back... Uh, south, southeast... Quick save... or auto save, rather. And north again. Up a long, wide slope. Very exposed. Towards a ruin. I don't like this. There's herlocks up here. Three herlocks, four herlocks, and a herlock alpha. That's a red tier. Let's get started. Yeah! No genlocks. Only one shall stand! Either you or me! It's gonna be me! Right! Then we have that awesome. I see a codex update just now. I bet that's about the alpha. Creatures. Oh, I see. The Herlock and the Herlock page itself has updated. So, Alpha. Alpha Herlocks are more intelligent and more skilled fighters, often serving as commanders or even generals. And then Emissaries. Herlock Emissaries have also been known to appear during a blight. These Darkspawn are the only ones recorded as being capable of human speech and are often capable of employing magic. We also have an entry on wolves. Um, which I won't read, because they're wolves. They're gray wolves. And shades, which is the type of demon that we fought there. So what was the Herlock Alpha carrying? An enchanted steel dagger. Very cool. What will I destroy for this? I guess I'll get rid of my old, um, clothes. My, like, PJs that I had. And a chainmail, chest plate, and gloves. He also has 20 fire arrows and 20 fire crossbow bolts. Let's see. Anyone else drop anything? A herlock dropped a health poultice and 48 copper. There's a death root up here. And we have reached the ruined tower that holds the Grey Warden's cache. So that was our second quest. We collected some blood. And now we're here to look for the Grey Warden's cache, which is appears to be a ruined wooden box just sitting in the middle of this... Well, not in the middle, towards the side of this ruined tower. I mean, nothing's left of this tower. We're in sort of the courtyard area. And the tower itself, like, maybe a third of it is there? Between the walls and, and a tiny bit of the... of one side? So the cache starts a cutscene. I kneel down to look into it. Obviously nothing's there. There's a woman- Well, well. 
What have we here? Standing behind me on a ledge. Are you a vulture, I wonder? A scavenger, poking amidst a corpse whose bones were long since cleaned? Or merely an intruder, come into these dark spawn-filled wilds of mine in search of easy prey? What say you, hmm? Scavenger or intruder? Woman uh, has brown skin, dark straight hair pulled back into a uh, spiky bun. She has short bangs over her forehead. She's wearing a an outfit that's really sort of a patchwork of various bits. She's got a uh, corset-like um, short piece over her midsection. She has a purple hood, uh, loosely draped, um, not up over her head, but draped around her neck and loosely down her front. She's wearing um, black leather sort of sleeves, sort of full arm sleeves. And on her left shoulder, she has a, a spray of black feathers off her shoulder pad. Around her neck, she's wearing um, an ornate uh, golden necklace with um, sort of bars pointing in towards her neck and a medallion. She also has a string of pearls, it seems like, below that. Uh, her skirt is made of patchwork leather and has various straps, like remnants of belts, hanging from it. And she has leather strappy boots as well. What say you, hmm? Scavenger or intruder? Uh, intruder? And just how are these your wilds? <laughs> because I know them as only one who owns them could. Can you claim the same? I have watched your progress for some time. He's walking toward me. Where do they go, I wondered. Why are they here? And now you disturb ashes none have touched for so long. Why is that? Don't answer her. She looks chastened, and that means others may be nearby. Oh, you fear barbarians will swoop down upon you. Yes, swooping is bad. She's a witch of the wild, she is. She'll turn us into toads. Witch of the Wilds. Such idle fancies, those legends. Have you no minds of your own? You there. Women do not frighten like little boys. Tell me your name and I shall tell you mine. Uh, so while she was talking there, she walked past us and is now standing on the other side of the ruins with the forest to her back. Um, various options here. I'm gonna- I'm gonna go with the polite one. You can call me Bryony. And you may call me Morrigan, if you wish. Shall I guess your purpose? You sought something in that chest? Something that is here no longer? Here no longer? You stole them, didn't you? You're some kind of sneaky witch thief. How very eloquent. How does one steal from dead men? Quite easily, it seems. Those documents are Grey Warden property, and I suggest you return them. I will not, for it was not I who removed them. Invoke a name that means nothing here any longer if you wish. I am not threatened. Then who removed them? It was my mother, in fact. Can you take us to her? Hmm. There is a sensible request. <laughs> I like you. I'd be careful. First it's, I like you, but then zap. Frog time. She'll put us all in the pot, she will. Just you watch. If the pot's warmer than this forest, it'd be a nice change. Follow me then, if it pleases you. And we follow. Fade to black. <laughs> the uh, loading screen here. Weapons and armor come in a variety of materials, such as iron and dragon bone. Better materials make for better equipment. No kidding, iron is the worst material, dragon bone is the best one. Now we're walking towards. Greetings, mother. I bring before you four Grey Wardens who... I see them, girl. 
Hmm. Much as I expected. Are we supposed to believe you were expecting us? You are required to do nothing, least of all believe. Shut one's eyes tight or open one's arms wide. Either way, one's a fool. She's a witch, I tell you. We shouldn't be talking to her. Quiet, Dareth. If she's really a witch, do you want to make her mad? There is a smart lad. Sadly irrelevant to the larger scheme of things, but it is not I who decides. Believe what you will. And what of you? Does your elven mind give you a different viewpoint? What do you believe? So the woman we're talking to here, Morgan's mother, is also brown-skinned. Uh, she's wearing a, a yellow and brown blouse. I uh, can't see her skirt right now. She has gray hair, sort of loosely tucked into into a braid behind her head, but is sort of falling down around her forehead. What do you believe? I'm no fool, if that's what you're asking. Oh, if you must protest so quickly, perhaps I need not ask. So much about you is uncertain, and yet I believe. Do I? Why, it seems I do. So, this is a dreaded Witch of the Wilds. Witch of the Wilds, huh? Morrigan must have told you that. She fancies such tales, though she would never admit it. Oh, how she dances under the moon. <laughs> they did not come to listen to your wild tales, Mother. True, they came for their treaties, yes? And before you begin barking, your precious seal wore off long ago. I have protected these. You... Oh, you protected them. And why not? Take them to your Grey Wardens and tell them this Blight's threat is greater than they realize. How do you know all this? Do I? Perhaps I am simply an old woman with a penchant for mole departments. <laughs> Oh, do not mind me. <laughs> you have what you came for. Time for you to go, then. Do not be ridiculous, girl. These are your guests. Oh, very well. I will show you out of the woods. Follow me. And fade to black again. Loading screen. There have been four blights in total. The last ended 400 years ago at the Battle of Aisley. Humanity mistakenly believed the Darkspawn were permanently defeated there. Mistakenly, indeed. So Morrigan is our convenient, you don't have to walk back through that whole area again, guide. And bring us right back to Ostagar, as soon as we get through a loading. There we go. We're back at Ostagar, back at the southwest gate. It is now nighttime. And before we report into Duncan, I'm going to go ahead and turn in our side quest to the Kennel Master. The, uh, the other Grey Wardens will just have to run along behind me. The Mabari's stable for now, but not improving. Unless I get that herb I told you about, there's not much hope. Is this the flower you're looking for? Let me see. Yeah, that's exactly it. Wonderful. Yeah, give me a moment and I'll make this into an ointment. He looks better already. I'm sure he'd thank you himself if he could. That was very fast. What will happen to him now? Let's give him a day or two to recover. Why not come back after the battle? Perhaps we can see about imprinting him on you. You think that's possible? Maybe. It's likely he understands you're responsible for curing him. Mabari are at least as smart as your average tax collector. Come back after the battle and just... Or take another look. Sounds good to me. <laughs> that gave us enough experience to level up Alistair. I'm gonna sell some things to the quartermaster. Hello again. Is there something you need? Some supplies, perhaps? Let me see what you have. Let me know what you'd like. The first thing I'm gonna buy... Well, I'm actually gonna buy is go down in his inventory and buy a backpack. Which will increase my storage space by 10. What, I can't buy it when my inventory's full? You bastard. Alright, I'll sell off my wolf pelts and gems first. Then I'll buy a backpack. Fine. Alright, 
so now I have 80 storage space. Um, let's see, I'm gonna sell this tier one. I'm gonna sell a couple of tier one things. Since almost everything I have is tier two or better by now. I'm also gonna sell the iron ring and gold ring that I've picked up, because those give no stat boosts. All right, and now it is nighttime and the tranquil mage is not standing by his chest. So we can use our prisoner key to unlock that. Let's get started. He has two health poultices, two injury kits, two lesser spirit bombs, eight flasks, a set of enchanter's robes, an enchanter's cowl, two apprentice cowls, and 15 silver. A lot of mage equipment. Will be useful for when we eventually get a mage party member. Let's see, do I have any other quests? Nope, just returning to Duncan. Oh, I should level up Alistair for a moment here. Alright. Let's see. Strength... 21, Constitution, 18. And for his ability point, I'll give him the passive bonus, Shield Balance. The character has learned to compensate for the weight of a shield in combat and no longer suffers an attack penalty while using the mode Shield Defense. In addition, the character gains plus 5 attack while using the shield. Hey, Duncan. So, you returned from the wilds. Have you been successful? We have. Good. I've had the Circle Mages preparing. With the blood you've retrieved, we can begin the joining immediately. Maybe we should tell you about Morrigan and her mother. There was a woman at the tower, and her mother had the scrolls. They were both very... odd. Were they wilder folk? I don't think so. They might be apostates. Mages hiding from the Chantry. I know you were once a Templar, Alistair, but Chantry business is not ours. We have the scrolls. Let us focus on the joining. Now will you tell us what this ritual's about? I will not lie. We Grey Wardens pay a heavy price to become what we are. Fate may decree that you pay your price now, rather than later. You're saying this ritual can kill us? As could any darkspawn you might face in battle. You would not have been chosen, however, if I did not think you had a chance to survive. Let's go, then. I'm anxious to see this joining now. I agree. Let's have it done. Then let us begin. Alistair, take them to the old temple. Fade to black. I believe the old temple is where we first met Alistair. Yeah. The more I hear about this joining, the less I like it. Are you blubbering again? Why all these damn tests? Have I not earned my place? Maybe it's tradition. Maybe they're just trying to annoy you. Calm down. There's nothing we can do about it now. I only know that my wife is in Hyever with a child on the way. If they had warned me, I... It just doesn't seem fair. Would you have come if they'd warned you? Maybe that's why they don't. The Wardens do what they must, right? Including sacrificing us? I'd sacrifice a lot more if I knew it would end the blight. Will you both shut up? Yes, yeah, Sir Knight. Try not to wet your trousers until the ritual starts. I've just never faced a foe I could not engage with my blade. At last, we come to the joining. The Grey Wardens were founded during the First Blight, when humanity stood on the verge of annihilation. So it was that the first Grey Wardens drank of Darkspawn blood and mastered their taint. We're going to drink the blood of those... those creatures. As the first Grey Wardens did before us, as we did before you. This is the source of our power and our victory. Those who survive the joining become immune to the taint. We can sense it in the Darkspawn and use it to slay the Archdemon. Those who survive. Not all who drink the blood will survive, and those who do are forever changed. This is why the joining is a secret. 
It is the price we pay. We speak only a few words prior to the joining, but these words have been said since the first. Alistair, if you would. Join us, brothers and sisters. Join us in the shadows where we stand vigilant. Join us as we carry the duty that cannot be forsworn. And should you perish, know that your sacrifice will not be forgotten. And that one day, we shall join you. Jory looks nervously at the cup and back. step forward. Duncan holds out the cup to Davith, who hesitates a moment, then brings it up and drinks deeply. It's a huge goblet, almost as big as his face. Hands it back to Duncan after drinking. Stands for a moment. Then wretches and bends over, screaming. His eyes go white. Make his breath! And clutching at his throat, he collapses and choking. I am sorry, Davith. Step forward, Jory. But I have a wife, Jory a child. A sword. There is Had no I known. turning back. No, you ask too much. There is no glory in this. Jory has his back to the wall. Duncan draws his dagger. The fight, parry, one, two. Duncan stabs Jory. I am Jory sorry. And he collapses to the ground. But the joining is not yet complete. You are called upon to submit yourself to the taint for the greater good. I drink deeply from the cup. From this moment forth, you are a Grey Warden. I put my hand to my face in pain. Bend over, and my eyes go white. I see a vision of a tainted dragon in this green sky. It is finished. Welcome. Two more deaths. In my joining, only one of us died, but it was horrible. I'm glad at least one of you made it through. How do you feel? I've just stood up off the ground again. Nothing you said prepared me for that. Such is what it takes to be a Grey Warden. Did you have dreams? I had terrible dreams after my joining. Such dreams come when you begin to sense the dark spawn, as we all do. That and many other things can be explained in the months to come. Before I forget, there is one last part to your joining. We take some of that blood and put it in a pendant. Something to remind us of those who didn't make it this far. Take some time. When you're ready, I'd like you to accompany me to a meeting with the king. Um, yeah, I'll repeat the vision again. It was a vision, uh, very brief, of the, uh, what we know as the Archdemon, a tainted dragon, red and black, and, uh, with way too many teeth, uh, standing against a green, hazy sky, roaring. I'd like you to accompany me to a meeting with the king. What kind of meeting? The king is discussing strategy for the upcoming battle. I am not sure why he has requested your presence. The meeting is to the west, down the stairs. Please attend as soon as you're able. All right, Duncan and Alistair are walking away. And I have received um, all of the equipment that Davith and Jory had, as well as my own set of Grey Warden armor. Grey Warden Scout set. It is medium armor, not light, but that's all right. We've also received two level one Grey Warden daggers, but I'm not gonna equip those because they're worse than mine. 
time for a quick trip to the Quartermaster. Because now I have all of Davith and Jory's random stuff. Hello again. Is there something you need? Some supplies, perhaps? Let me see what you have. Let me know what you'd like. Selling a bunch of armor sets. I'm still gonna be running out of space, but at least I'll be a little bit less running out. I'm also gonna, while I'm here, buy from the Quartermaster some crafting recipes, since I have nine gold already, which is an amazing amount of money. Each of these recipes is like 50 silver. So I'm gonna buy health poultice recipe, injury kit recipe, acid flask recipe, concentrated venom recipe, A couple of trap plans. I guess I'll buy those too. These don't take inventory space, which is nice. Let me also check his secret Hello stuff. Hello again. Is there something you need? Some supplies, perhaps? Let me see your other goods. So long as you keep it quiet. Alright, he's got some bombs. Some throwables. He's got... oh wow. He's got some, some higher tier recipes. I'll go ahead and buy those. He also has some very good equipment, which I unfortunately don't have the money for. A um, couple of tier 5 swords, a tier 5 greatsword and a tier 5 longsword, which none of us would be able to use anyway. Their strength requirement is too high. He also has a mage dark robe for 7 gold, which I can't buy. Uh, but I have a mage robe that I looted from that cache, so that'll be alright. Hey, Alistair. If the king wants to see you and Duncan, you probably shouldn't keep him waiting. He might get mad, start crying. You'll feel bad and... Well, it won't be pretty. Okay. <laughs> no conversation, just that. Alright, time for a save. King's Council? Question mark? Oh, I also have leveled up. Let's see. Plus two dex, I'm up to 22. Plus one cunning. And for a talent, I'm gonna pick dual weapon training level two. Gaining bonuses of plus five to attack and defense while wielding dual weapons and an extra five attack while attacking with a dual weapon talent. Right. 
What? What did I not pick? Oh, I got a second talent. I got two talents on that level up. All right, I'll also pick the passive combat movement, giving me that 180 degree backstab. And here's the war council in the giant room. Logain, my decision is final. I will stand by the Grey Wardens in this assault. You risk too much, Kaelin. The Darkspawn Horde is too dangerous for you to be playing hero on the front lines. If that's the case, perhaps we should wait for the Orlesian forces to join us after all. I must repeat my protest to your fool notion that we need the Orlesians to defend ourselves. It is not a fool notion. Our arguments with the Orlesians are a thing of the past, and you will remember who is king. How fortunate Marek did not live to see his son ready to hand Ferelden over to those who enslaved us for a century. Then our current forces will have to suffice, won't they? Duncan, are your men ready for battle? They are, Your Majesty. And this is the recruit I met earlier on the road. I understand congratulations are in order. So there's a bunch of people here standing around a long table. Um, really a dining table, but it has a map of the area laid out on it. King Kaelin and Loghain are on one side. Duncan and I are on the other side. There are some guards standing nearby, and a couple of other people who I didn't see. Um, congratulations are in order. Thank you, Your Majesty. Every Grey Warden is needed now. You should be honored to join their ranks. Your fascination with glory and legends will be your undoing, Kaelin. We must attend to reality. Fine. Speak your strategy. The Grey Wardens and I draw the Darkspawn into charging our lights, and then? You will alert the tower to light the beacon, signaling my men to charge from To flank the Darkspawn, I remember. This is the Tower of Ishal in the ruins, yes? Well, who shall light this beacon? I have a few men stationed there. It's not a dangerous task, but it is vital. Then we should send our best. Send Alistair and the new Grey Warden to make sure it's done. If it's not dangerous, I could do it myself. No. It's best that you both go. You rely on these Grey Wardens too much. Is that truly wise? Enough of your conspiracy theories, Logain. Grey Wardens battle the Blight no matter where they're from. Your Majesty, you should consider the possibility of the Archdemon appearing. There have been no signs of any dragons in the wilds. Isn't that what your men are here for, Duncan? I... Yes, Your Majesty. Your Majesty, the tower and its beacon are unnecessary. The we circle will of not Magi... trust any lives to your spells, mage. Save them for the Darkspawn. A mage and a chain Enough. priestess. This plan will suffice. The Grey Wardens will light the beacon. Thank you, Logain. I cannot wait for that glorious moment. The Grey Wardens battle beside the King of Ferelden to stem the tide of evil. Yes, Kaelin. A glorious moment for us all. I just realized that I hadn't actually described Loghain before now. You heard the plan. Oh. You and Alistair will go to the Tower of Ishal and ensure the beacon is lit. What? I won't be in the battle. This is by the King's personal request, Alistair. If the beacon is not lit, Terran Loghain's men won't know when to charge. So he needs two Grey Wardens standing up there holding the torch just in case, right? Um, I realized we hadn't met Loghain before, so I hadn't described him yet. He is a, um, a pale-skinned man with very dark hair, uh, dark black hair, long, uh, sort of falling around his shoulder length, with thick eyebrows and a very severe face, but sort of sickly looking. Um, his skin is very pale. Uh, Alistair, just, just in case, right? Um, I agree with Alistair. We should be in the battle. That is not your choice. If King Kaelin wishes Grey Wardens to ensure the beacon is lit, then Grey Wardens will be there. We must do whatever it takes to destroy the Darkspawn, exciting or no. I get it, I get it. Just so you know, if the King ever asks me to put on a dress and dance the Remigold, I'm drawing the line. Darkspawn or no. You have some odd ideas about the King. I happen to be quite fetching in a dress. Hmm. The tower is on the other side of the gorge from the King's camp, the way we came when we arrived. You'll need to cross the gorge and head through the gate and up to the tower entrance. From the top, you'll overlook the entire valley. Where will you be? 
I will be fighting beside the King with the rest of the Grey Wardens, again at his request. We will signal you when the time is right. Alistair will know what to look for. How much time do we have? The battle is about to begin. Once I leave, move quickly. You'll have less than an hour. What if the Archdemon appears? We soil our drawers, that's what. If it does, leave it to us. I want no heroics from either of you. Can we join the battle afterwards? Stay with the Terran's men and guard the tower. If you are needed, we will send word. I know what I have to do. Then I must join the others. From here, you two are on your own. Remember, you are both Grey Wardens. I expect you to be worthy of that title. Duncan, may the Maker watch over you. May he watch over us all. All right. Uh, so Duncan walks away from the campfire, leaving the two of us back as the uh, only two party members currently. Um, hey, Lars himself. Yes, I can make a list of the mods I'm using. Um, I actually just reinstalled them all from a list, so I, I have one handy. Uh, it is a copious number. Uh, you've noticed the Warden Armor mod that gives all of the Grey Wardens matching armor sets. Uh, in the vanilla game, every person is just wearing a, a different sort of basic armor set. Uh, and a various and sundry number of other things. So yeah, I will post that on my Twitter uh, when I'm finished, which is actually going to be very soon. There's a couple more cutscenes we need to see. And then we'll be at the Tower of Ishal dungeon, which is where we will leave it. So for now, we're going to run towards the bridge across the ravine. Triggering a cutscene. This one's a movie. Lightning strikes over Ostagar. It's raining, of course. We see the Ferelden army set up in the ravine. Archers on the battlements. Infantry in varying levels of armor. Men and women staring solidly ahead. A line of Mabari in front. The priest walks down the line, holding a brazier of incense. King Kaelin and Duncan The plan will first. work, your majesty. Of course it will. The blight ends here. We look from the army's perspective into the forest, where hundreds of torches, thousands of the dark spawn, we see them approaching the fog, walking slowly. Face of the Genlock snarling. Back to the wide shot. Thousands of torches. A tall ogre walks to the front. A helmet of horns. The entire army snarls following his lead. The Ferelvins. One man steps back with fear and is pushed forward again by his commander. Kaelin surveys the battlefield. Herlock orders the Dark Spawn army to charge. Running forward, a giant ogre walks up in the midst. Various shots of various Dark Spawn. Genlocks, Herlocks, just all Archers! Ferelden archers light flaming arrows. The commander raises his hand and lowers it to the fire. The hail of arrows hits the beginning of the war, but pounds relative to the strength. The line of Mabari charges, dogs painted red, black, and white. Clashing the dark spawn line. One For Ferelden! Falls, and then the Ferelden army infantry charges. A giant flaming uh, boulder launched from the trebuchet hits the top of the Tower of Ishal. We see Alistair and Bryony uh, cowering, sort of in reflexive 
fear of that impact. Let's cross the bridge and get to the Tower of Ishal. The battle has begun. Uh, you are correct. This is a very Lord of the Rings ass battle. Um, so we have to cross the bridge here. There's archers on the south side firing towards the battle. And. And these trebuchet boulders are hitting. You will fall! Some of them hitting very near us. The statue that we noticed earlier in the center of the bridge, the one uh, tall man holding a spear, that's been just broken in half. I'm in need of help! Oh, a boulder just hit a line of four archers, and I was caught in the blast too, knocked backwards. You Only one of them got up to keep come. firing. Here over the edge here. It's hard to really see, but there sure are. There sure is the animation of a battle down there. It honestly, looks kind of like a bunch of worms from this height. Um, and lightning and this storm just all around. It is the worst night for a battle. Now uh, we've made it to the other side. Running up Help to me. the. They're everywhere. They've taken the tower. Up. Oh. You. You. Grey Wardens, aren't you? The tower, it's been taken. What are you talking about, man? Taken how? The Darkspawn came up through the lower chambers. They're everywhere. Most of our men are dead. Then we have to get to the beacon and light it ourselves. Alright, so now we have two random army uh, soldiers to fill out our party to four. We have a crossbowman mage. Crossbowman is actually warrior class, not rogue class. I'm gonna go ahead and give him archer talents anyway. He has a gray iron chainmail set, medium armor, and a crossbow. That's fine. Mage. Um, the mage is gonna be hard to hard to level here. Let's see. How many times have I played this game? Um, how are you defining played? Uh, campaigns begun or campaigns completed? Because those are gonna be very different answers. I would say I've completed it mm, six times. Um, maybe seven or eight? Uh, begun. That's gotta be in the... Over a dozen, for sure. Alright, I've just given the mage a, a basic smattering of low-level magic spells, mostly elemental. Uh, frost blast, a lightning blast, um, a sort of mental blast that stuns enemies around him if he gets surrounded. I'm gonna go ahead and give him the cool uh, magic robe we looted from that tranquil. That changes his robe from a generic mage robe, plus two willpower, plus two magic, a sort of golden green robe to- whoops, I made him naked for a moment- to an enchanter's robe. Um, oh wait, no, I have several magic things. I want the enchanter's robes. Uh, this is a red and brown palette. Three willpower, three magic, three defense, four percent spell resistance, plus ten health. I've also given him the enchanter's boots that we looted from the demon thing. We don't have any mage- no, we do have mage helmets. What am I saying? An enchanter's arming cowl. Plus two willpower, plus two spell power, plus ten mental resistance. It's a good thing I have the hide helmets mod, because this thing is just absolutely ridiculous. It's like a cone on top of his head. 
with a, a little diamond in the front near his forehead and strings hanging down all around and a bundle of feathers sticking out the top. It is just absolutely wild. Um, and I forgot to turn my difficulty up before we got here, so darkspawn fights here in a minute are going to be extremely easy, but that's okay. I've given them basic tactics presets. I'll probably deal more with that next time when we're actually in the tower. Darkspawn approach. Watch so we're running up blood. to the courtyard of the tower, and there's army soldiers up here fighting a bunch of warlocks and losing. As you wish. Here we go! Alright, we're gonna talk over a battle. Show me what you got! How loud this is. Um, I started out Next. on easy because I installed a difficulty mod that rebalances all of the three. This is it. So, let's, have at it. let's make this quick, so shall we? The game used to follow well a pretty rock standard RPG progression where like all of the enemies at the start are easy, this should be easy and enough. all of the enemies at the end are hard, no matter what type of enemy they are. Yeah, the game volume is very high in battle, which is why I'm trying not to talk over it. Um, so I installed a rebalance mod that makes all enemies of the same type sort of relatively similar. So like all herlocks that we encounter throughout the game Let's get started. will be relatively similar instead of all being easy at the beginning and all being hard at the end. What that mod can do, however, is make things ridiculously hard at the start. So like, if you happen to be in an origin that has enemies that are traditionally harder, you might find them, like, punishingly hard at the start because of the rebalance. Which is why I turned it easy to begin with. But I don't think I needed it. Um, I'm running around the battlefield here. I haven't looted anything interesting. Some coins. A garnet, I think. A health poultice. Uh, now we're gonna head further up towards the tower. There's more soldiers and dark spawn up here. Again, the soldiers were losing quite badly. Stay still. On it. And more further up, another ramp to the actual base of the tower. Three Genlock archers. Time for some fun. And a Herlock Alpha. This should be easy enough. Hopefully, they're not immune to stunning. Excellent. Alright, time to loot all these bad boys. The Alpha is carrying some demonic ichor, which is a crafting reagent. Garnet from a genlock, acidic coating from a genlock. My inventory is almost full again. As you wish. Oh, there may have been a death blow. I missed it. Darn. Well, we'll be fighting plenty of darkspawn inside. <laughs> oh, I, I, I decapitated the herlock? Oh, I didn't even notice. That serves me right. We were getting tons of decapitations in the origin story. Uh, there's an unlockable chest over here with an iron axe. In our origin story, we were fighting a bunch of human guards. I do have a mod that turns death blows higher, but not 100%. Um, the 
The funny thing is the non-variety. I sure thought there were more than just the, uh, the head loppings. Alright, we've reached the entrance to the tower, and so that's where I'm going to call it for tonight. Tomorrow we will work our way up the Tower Vishal to the beacon that will light for this, um, for this battle that is definitely, definitely time-sensitive. Definitely do not have all the time in the world to run around and loot. Um, nothing will go wrong with this battle and everything is fine. Uh, tomorrow will be in the evening at regular time, so 9 o'clock Eastern. And then, I haven't made next week's plan yet, but Monday will probably be back to Crusader Kings. Um, I will, I will figure out a schedule and post it on Twitter and here on my cards when I know it. Alright, let's go ahead and save. Power time. All right, so from the uh, lightning and storm and battle raging in the distance, uh, I bid you all good night and thank you for watching, and nothing will go wrong in Dragon Age, ever. Good night. <laughs>